This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. Today we have a Kenmore electric dryer that isn't heating and this is a pretty easy thing to fix and this video will show us how to do it pretty fast. Here's what the heating mechanism looks like inside the dryer. And this one circled in yellow is the thermal cutoff. That's probably the thing that we'll have to replace. So first we have to unplug it, or if you can't unplug it, you can turn off the two breakers that power up the dryer. We're gonna remove this lower panel by pushing in with a screwdriver on this clip on the right and the one on the left at the top of the panel. And then we can just pull it off to the side. And then we're going to get our multi-tester ready to test a couple of things. And that thermal cutoff lives on this heating assembly back here a ways. Uh, again, it's one in the yellow, so it's back near the, the back of the heater, about maybe a foot and a half in from the front of the dryer. And there's one quarter inch screw at the bottom of it that you have to unloosen and you have to pull the wires off of it and then you can get the thermal cutoff out of there. It's just hard to see what you're doing, so a lot of it's just done by feel. So I got my probes now on the thermal cutoff and I have it set for beeping with resistance if it's working, but I didn't get a beep. So I know that it got overheated and it cut power to the heater. So I'm wiggling the wires off right now before I remove it. And you might even need to use a pair of pliers to, to wiggle it off. I'm using a quarter inch driver to undo that quarter inch screw. There's the screw. You might need to use a little ratchet to get in there. And again, a lot of it's just done by feel because it's hard to see what's going on. I'm testing this thermal cutoff now to see if it has continuity. If it beeps, it has continuity. And no beep, so I know it's not working. One way to reset it the best thing to do is to replace it. If you want to reset it, you can just slam it down on a hard surface, and that'll actually most times get it going. But here's a really cheap kit you can buy at Amazon. I'll put a uh, description in the description below. I'll put a link for the part. But now this one actually works just by banging it down. So in a pinch, you could just reuse it, but again, it's recommended to replace it. So I'm going to use a quarter inch screw to put that back in. The top of the thermal cutoff doesn't have a screw, but it has a little piece of metal that goes into a hole in the heater. I bend this back so I can now see how the heater is doing when I turn it back on. And while I'm in here, I'm gonna remove some of the lint that's built up, and this helps to avoid a fire danger. So you wanna just make sure it's unplugged, but reach in and get it rid of as much of the lint as you can. I'm also going to remove this uh, filter housing in the front so I can clean up some of the lint that usually accumulates in there. That'll make the dryer run better. I'm going to get the filter out and then I'll use a quarter inch socket to zip out two screws at the top. The one here on the upper left and on the upper right. And then I can just pull that ducting out of there and then clean it up. It's also going to allow me to check another little fuse that may have blown. And if you have a continuity tester, a multi-tester, you can see if, if it's okay or not. And it lives right above the blower housing. I'm just getting rid of a lot of the lint that I can see that's built up. It blocks some of the airflow and can actually cause the um, dryer to have uh, the high limit and fuses blow because it gets a little bit too hot. But there's very little uh, lint in this one, so I suspect the clog is probably in the dryer vent tube. So I'm checking this thermal fuse right here, and it does beep and does have some resistance, so it's okay. I don't need to replace it. Uh, the kit that we showed earlier in the video that you can get from Amazon comes with these new thermal fuses too if you need to replace them. And I'm just reaching in and cleaning up a lot of the lint that's accumulated inside the filter housing. And you can just reach in with your hand and get that stuff out of there. 
but it is kind of rare that that would cause the dryer to overheat. It's more common that it's where the uh, air leaves the dryer in the dryer vent tube that gets clogged. And the longer that dryer vent tube, the more critical that becomes. So I'm also reaching into the blower here and just pulling out any lint that I can see. So my goal is to get as much of the lint out of the way so we have nice airflow. I'm going to put that housing back on by putting it the bottom part down first and then pushing in the top and then pushing the top of it up a little bit and then I'll add the two quarter inch screws that hold that housing in. It's held in at the bottom by a, by a spring clip. I'll zip that one back in and I'll make sure I add the filter back in. And now I can plug it in and I'll set it for uh, 90 minutes time dry and make sure it's on the hot setting and then I'll press start. I'm going to look at the heating element to make sure it gets nice and red. And that means the heating system's working good again. Go ahead and bend this heat deflector back to where it was. Just bend it back up and I'm going to go ahead and add the front plate back in. So it goes on to these little clips on the bottom and the top clips <clears throat> but we can see they just snap into position super easy and here's the part that you can replace that's very common to fail sometimes the heating element goes out but it's usually that part I checked the outside and the dryer uh, volume was really good like a hair dryer so thanks for watching Thanks so much for watching our video. We really appreciate your support. And when you get a chance, please press the subscribe button below so you can be subscribed and also the notification bell so we can send you more videos about appliance repair. Please also give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you really liked the video and it really helped you, please press this new applaud button and you can show your support and also get a nice clapping hands for your video. Thanks again.